In this session, we're going to explore dreams as guides that can teach us a forgotten way of thinking that seems new to us as modern humans, but that is actually ancient and natural to us. This style of thinking just needs to be remembered. My name is Taria Ward, and I am here to help you unlock the mystery of your dreams. This forgotten way of thinking I call dream thinking, a style of thinking that is natural to our indigenous mind. Let me describe what I mean when I refer to the indigenous mind. By this term, I refer to the ways of knowing and being of indigenous peoples past and present who inhabit every continent of the world. But more than that, I use it to refer to the natural mind that is natural but possibly unknown to each of us as humans. It is our original psychic endowment, how we are created at a cellular level. This is all who we all naturally are. In the last many centuries, colonizers have taken over and eradicated the way of life of original peoples all over the world. Because of this colonization, humans have become increasingly separate from nature, feeling superior to it. Our style of thinking has come to reflect these new values and attitudes. As mystics and physicists alike will tell us, thought creates the world. The colonization of our own indigenous mind and self has led to a world in crisis. The destruction of balance in the natural world has the potential to lead us to environmental catastrophes beyond our imagining. With these concerns foremost in my mind, I do believe the recovery of our indigenous mind is imperative for us as modern humans. And listening to our dreams and recovering our connection to the dream time are a way forward. Indigenous cultures understand that the intelligence of the natural world is a high form of knowledge and wisdom, superior in many cases to that of the human. We humans are just one form of existence in this vast and complex web of life, and all species deserve to be given rights and respect. These intelligences can and will communicate with us if we learn how to listen. As Carl Jung says, the psyche is archaic. It goes back many millions of years. A mode of thought that we have developed in just the last few centuries, which Jung called directed thinking, is utilized in order to produce a specific outcome. It is very utilitarian. This way of thinking has overtaken our modern minds, becoming the dominant mode of thought that is used. This is a very recent development. In earlier times, humans predominantly utilized other aspects of mind, including our innate capacity to listen to language beyond words, to communicate with all aspects of life, knowing ourselves as brothers and sisters to all elements and species, fully realizing that harm to one community of life creates harm to all, as we are in fact all one unified organism of Earth. Jung stated, the dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul. When we work conscientiously with our dreams, they will teach us how to conceive of ourselves and our world beyond the illusions that separate the human from the rest of life. Our dreams can guide us into the landscapes of dreamtime consciousness that is our root matter as humans, our original awareness, the ground of our being. When Jung traveled to Africa, 
He visited some indigenous peoples and was very anxious to ask them about their dreams. When he asked the medicine man about this, the Laban, or wise man, told Jung, with tears in his eyes, that before the colonizers came and took over their lands, his people lived by their dreams, which told them whether there would be war or sickness, when the rain would come, and where the herds should be driven. But, he said, since the white colonizers were in Africa, no one had dreams anymore. The divine voice which counseled the tribe was no longer needed because the English knew better. This makes me think that the style of mind that the colonizers developed has stopped the connection to the dreaming, not just for indigenous people, but has halted that connection inside of each of us too. But we can recover. Author Robert Lawler writes about the indigenous people of Australia in his marvelous book entitled Voices of the First Day, Awakening in the Aboriginal Dreamtime. He writes, the Aboriginal dreaming is tuned to receiving suggestions, images, and potencies directly from the pervading, pulsating voice of the earth and the prevailing echoes of the creative ancestors in the heavens. The potential of the dream time is still alive within us, both psychologically and physically. No objective can be of greater significance for human survival than the recovery of the dreaming. The Aboriginal way of life and the Aboriginal revelation hold the seeds for the rebirth of the dream time in humanity. I will share with you a couple of extraordinary experiences I have had, which let me know that the communication with the more than human world is indeed very possible. This world is available to us and is profoundly moving. On one occasion, during a time of enormous transition and upheaval in my life, I decided to do a 10-day vision quest. This meant that I went into a wilderness environment and stayed in my defined questing space without human contact for 10 days. I set myself under a great oak tree. The stories that I could tell from these days are many, but the most startling one occurred about three or four days into my quest as I sat quietly, resting and listening. Suddenly, a voice came into my head that is like the kind of hearing that you have in dreams when you clearly discern the words being spoken, but you hear them in a different way, not with your physical ears. The voice said, can you get this off of me? It is irritating me. What a strange request. Who had made it? What in the world? I had heard it clearly. I looked about and after not too long, my eye was drawn to a large branch that had broken off from the top of the tree, probably during a windstorm, and was clumsily draped over a lower branch. I instantly knew that the voice that spoke to me had been that of the tree, and that she was asking me to remove this branch. It was irritating her. And so, with great effort, I did that and I heard a loud sigh of relief as the tree said, Thank you. You may think that I am making this up, but I am not. It happened. Another moving story I experienced was with a small lizard. My youngest daughter had caught this gorgeous creature who had a luminescent blue tail. We created a home for it in a box that stayed on our kitchen counter. After several days, both of my daughters and I concluded that this captivity was cruel and we should let the lizard loose again. But my youngest asked if we could wait until her papa could see it before we let it go. My husband had recently moved out of our family home and I was in utter trauma over what has, was happening to our family. On the next Saturday afternoon, 
Papa came to see and appropriately marvel at the lizard, which my daughter was so excited to introduce him to and tell him all about. We then took it outside to release it back to freedom. We stood as a foursome on the patio that had been shared as a family for so many years. The naturalness of this moment contrasted with what I knew in my mind. Our family would never again be a unit. This caused me to feel weak, as if I might faint. I was struggling for composure. The girls later told me that they spoke to me, but I could not register their words. As the three of them chatted away about something, I stood looking out at the horizon, trying desperately not to seem desperate and not to faint. Just then, the lizard came back and put its little body next to me, pushed firmly against my bare foot with its head lifted up, looking in the direction of the horizon along with me. We were latched together like this for several moments. I was startled by the arrival and the intimacy and something like an electric charge passed through my whole body. Suddenly, my mind was clear, the anxiety dissipated. I was at ease and felt calm. The lizard left, never to be seen again, and I turned around to join the conversation. The subtlety and the power of this lizard story has never left me. As I reflected upon it, though it does not match anything I understood about interspecies communication, I felt that possibly this little creature had lived in our home long enough to sense, in its way, something of what was going on in our house. In my moment of need, I cannot help but feel that it somehow understood, intentionally came to me, and made it possible for something very powerful to pass through me. Maybe it was simply the experience of love and empathy from this little creature. Like my experience with the tree, this event defies what we think we know about the non-human world, but I cannot deny either experience. This form of communication is beyond what is rational. It does not come through the brain, but through the cells, the genes, and I dare say, through the dreaming. Vast worlds of intelligence and tremendous love are lost to us if we will not reawaken the innate powers of these modes of perception. Our anthropocentrism, thinking of humans as the center of everything, must be reconsidered. The ego that we have created, well, with all of the man-made concerns of economics and markets and corporations and national borders, must be contextualized differently if we are to reawaken to the dreaming. We must work to rebalance life in this delicate biosphere that supports not just human life, but all life, millions of species who can and will partner with us to turn this around. It begins with each of us, one by one, making every small and large effort that we can make. Listen to your dreams. Listen to your indigenous dreaming mind. Think beyond words. Think with yourselves. Open your heart as the great organ of perception that it is. Be willing to live with uncertainty and engage the adventure of new and ancient frontiers. We are all in this together. Have fun with it. Tune in to the next sessions for more information about why to listen and how to listen to your dreams. I'm Taria Ward. As you listen to the language of your dreams, let me be a guide and sweet dreams. <laughs>